Well, welcome to lesson two. We just finished up talking about the uses of salt in the Bible today. I want to talk about some practical applications, go a little further with that. Um, it talks about in Matthew 5.13, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It's good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Luke 14 has a parallel passage that says basically the same thing, only it's a little more direct with the uselessness of non-salty salt, where it says it's neither fit for the land nor for the dung hill. For men just throw it out, but he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Well, I don't want to be thrown on the dunghill, that's for sure. That's not something that would be a pleasant experience for anyone, I am certain, but I don't want to be a part of it. So then, where does this idea come from, the salt that has lost its flavor? Well, if you've ever had any dealings with or understanding or learning of the Dead Sea, you realize that the Dead Sea is an end point. It is a terminal point for the Jordan River. Coming down from the Sea of Galilee, water comes down the Jordan River and into the Dead Sea, and there is no outlet. So therefore, all the sediment, all the minerals, all of anything that comes down the Jordan River and goes into the Dead Sea stays there. Therefore, the Dead Sea has a high mineral content. It is salty. As a matter of fact, it's called in some circles the Salt Sea. People can lie back on the surface of the Dead Sea and just float because the density of the water is so high. It's higher than regular water. You don't even have to work at it. You don't even have to know how to swim. You can just lie back and float on the top of the Dead Sea. It has almost an oily uh, consistency to it because there's so many minerals in there, especially salt. But as that water blows, the wind blows, and there are little waves or ebbs uh, to how it comes up on the side of the shoreline, the salt from the Dead Sea seeps into the dirt. And eventually, by being baked by the sun and by being mixed with the dirt, notice that principle there, being mixed with the dirt, it loses its saltiness and it takes on the characteristics of that dirt or that land that is around the Dead Sea. If they catch the shards early enough and can get them out and can separate the salt from the top of the dirt, they can still use it. But if it sits there long enough, it is no longer useful. And all they do with those shards of dirt and salt mixed together are toss them out because they're useless. In the same way, when we have the saltiness, the love, the gospel, the character of Jesus Christ, and we become mixed with the dirt around us, the world around us, if we allow sin to be mixed with the salt, eventually the salt seeps into it and disappears and dissipates, and all you have left is just dirty crystals that have no saltiness. Wow. Jesus is telling us here, don't allow yourself to be mixed with the dirt, the sin of the world. Don't allow yourself to be mixed in your allegiances or your loyalties or your affections. Instead, be pure salt and get into the world in a way that can change it rather than allowing it to change you. We're to be similar. We're to be a similitude of salt Salt, as I said in the last uh, lesson, makes one thirsty. We need to make people thirsty for Jesus Christ. We need to be a drawing card for Jesus Christ. We need to be someone who makes Christ look so good that others want to have him in their life as well. Make somebody thirsty today. Be salty be someone who can pervade the earth. What happens when you put just a few grains of salt into a glass of water and stir it up? The whole glass of water tastes salty. We should be able to permeate the earth without the earth permeating us. So let's be salty Christians. Let's have the presence of God in our lives so that those around us become thirsty for the things of God, the water of life. Thank you for being a part of this lesson today. Let's pray, God, make us salty. Salty in a good way. Salty in a way that draws people to the wonderful water that is found in Jesus Christ.